Seven-year-old prodigy skips grades to high school. His nerdy look is liked by girls, but he didn't like the suffocating feeling because he was too smart. His mother was afraid he would be bullied at school, so Sheldon was told repeatedly. I remember, if anybody bothers you, what do you say? My dad's a football coach. And? My brother's a football player. Good and told him not to mind other business. But just as they entered the classroom, he pointed out the inadequacy of all. This boy's hair is too long. The girl's clothes were too revealing. All of them violated the school rules. The elder brother in the same class was embarrassed. The teacher wanted him to pay attention to the class. He said that the teacher was not well-groomed. He didn't even shave his beard. The teacher's expression changed instantly after school. The teachers came to the principal to complain. The math teacher said she had just been in class for five minutes. Sheldon questioned her diploma. The classroom teacher said Sheldon was still trying to get him out of the classroom so that he could be the classroom teacher. So it was Sheldon's first day of school. Pissed off the whole school, they wanted to kick Sheldon out of school. His father, who was the gym teacher, and he didn't know how to speak up for him. When he got home from school, Dad told Sheldon, if you want to stay in school, you'd better not keep pointing out people's mistakes. Dad used to have a great job, then he found out someone was breaking the rules at work. So he reported them, and he ended up getting fired, and got a bad reputation. He told his son not to meddle in the future. Sheldon had a very high IQ, but his emotional intelligence was very low. Younger sister is happy that Sheldon has changed schools, and she doesn't have to share a school with him. While his elder brother was upset that he was at the same school as for this, Sheldon said he would soon skip another grade. He told his brother not to be sad. Sheldon's idol is Newton because he likes to study so much. He didn't even go out on holidays. Mom had to force him out the door. She told him to go play. Sheldon went under a tree. There, I played. His classmates thought Sheldon was a loner. They ostracized him. He was also alone at dinner time. His parents were distressed to see their son like this. But the truth is he wasn't alone. Instead, he enjoyed being alone because he was exploring the wonders of the universe. Thinking about the gravitational force on the surface of a black hole, his mother hopes that his elder brother, who is in the same class, to take care of his brother, but the younger sister intervened. She says that if they spend time with Shelton, friends would stay away from them. After hearing that, the mother educated her daughter. In fact, she was just jealous of Shelton. She couldn't understand why he was so good at math, but she was so bad at it. Sheldon went to the library so that his mother wouldn't worry about him. He went to the library. He wanted to find a book to teach himself how to make friends. He thought the library could solve all the problems on earth. The janitor lent him a book by Carnegie. He learned it in the book how to win friends. Compliment is the first step, so he found a classmate in his class. I admired your boldly applied makeup. He had no choice but to use the second trick to integrate into the group. So he found the boys of the basketball team. He wanted to play basketball with them after school. But the boys looked at him with amusement. At night, Sheldon was in bed wondering, why did the book say nothing worked? His sister told him, you can start with the list on your library card. Because the people who like to read this book are just like you. They don't have any friends. The next day Sheldon followed the names on his library card and said he wanted to make friends with her. But the teacher said she was reading the book was just trying to help her climb to the principal's position. Did it work? Are we sitting in the principal's office? Finally Sheldon found out these people on the list were all emotionally disturbed adults because the book was meant for adults. So he returned the book with disappointment. And just then, a little boy wanted to borrow the book. He had to go through all the trouble to find it. And so the two became friends. They shared the same interests, both like strange and unusual things, like building atomic bombs and rockets. When Sheldon found out he had made a friend, mom was very happy. Sheldon invited his friend home for dinner. The father was thrilled to learn that the boy was Vietnamese because he was a soldier who fought in the Vietnam War. So he asked the boy's mother if her name was Chin Lee. No, sir. Good. I mean, it's a small country. Why would you think you knew his mom? It was a very awkward meal because the boy was a victim of the Vietnam War. After the meal, Sheldon invites the boy to his lab. They were planning a rocket project. And that's when the FBI came to the door. They were looking for a terrorist named Shelton because he had recently ordered uraniums. The parents rushed to explain. He's just a little itty bitty thing. I mean, he's harmless. 
seven-year-old prodigy openly contradicts priest at church. He thinks there's no God in the world, but the priest tells him many famous scientists believed in the existence of God. Newton, for example, Einstein, even Darwin. After hearing this, Sheldon did not understand. He questioned the priest. So, in that case, isn't Darwin's theory of evolution wrong? Now you're getting it. Sheldon was deep in thought. When he got home, mom told the kids that because dad had a heart attack, she had to take dad to the hospital. She told grandma to come and watch them. Mom told them to stay home and not move. They really didn't move. Until grandma arrived, the siblings looked at grandma with a dumb face. That's when the mother called. She wanted to ask how the children were doing. Grandma said she had everything under control and told her not to worry. The mother then relaxed. After dinner, grandma played poker with Sheldon. Sheldon looked at the cards in his hand. He confidently pushed out his chips, but grandma took out the mirror. She asked Sheldon to look at the cards in his hand. And then he looked in the mirror. Sheldon smiled with satisfaction. Look at my face. Tell me what you see. That you're old. It's a good thing I love you. Then, Grandma asked Sheldon to look at her face again. Grandma looked at her cards, but showed a very sad look. The smart Sheldon immediately saw that. The cards in her hand were not good, but Grandma increases her chips. Sheldon confidently calls, but he didn't expect that she has a good hand. In the end, Sheldon lost. He was very puzzled. It was clear that Grandma was looking at the cards with a very unhappy expression. Grandma told him, What's on a person's face? is not always what's in their heart. Well, this changes everything. How do you know who to trust? You don't. That's what makes life interesting. Although little Sheldon's IQ is very high, but the emotional intelligence is zero. At night, Sheldon and his sister lay in bed unable to sleep. Sheldon was thinking about the nature of the world, and his sister was worried about his father's condition. At that moment, his brother pushed in the door. He wanted to go to the hospital to see his father together. They sneaked out into the yard. Then they stole the keys to grandma's car, ready to drive to the hospital. But Sheldon regretted it because he couldn't trust his brother's driving skills. He had no choice but to leave Sheldon behind. He started the car and was ready to go. Just then, Shelton opened the car door in full armor, climbing into the car with four pillows. And so they set off. Brother drove the car on the road snaking. All the garbage cans were knocked over by him. On the other hand, Grandma woke up. He found that her grandchildren were missing. Very panicked. Just then the mother called again. She wanted to know the status of the children. Grandma lied to her and told her that the child had gone to bed. After handing up the phone, Grandma saw a note on the table. I hate those kids. In order not to be held accountable by his daughter, she arrived at the hospital early, then said she brought the children to visit their father. Just then the children appeared. That's when Grandma was relieved. Grandma didn't want to be criticized, so she and the kids hid it from their mom. Shelton saw his dad in the hospital room. He was sad and helpless, so he went to the small auditorium, and he chose a seat and Saturday down. He folded his hands and began to pray. He thought if there is a God in the world, he hoped that God would make his father well at this moment. He hoped that God existed. Soon after the child fell asleep on their grandmother's body. That's when mother pushed the door open. She said dad's surgery was a success. He was cured. In that moment, Sheldon began to have a reverence for faith. Science is fact. God is faith. Maybe the end of science is God. The next day they came back to church. The priest was telling them about the creation of Jesus. When the priest talked about Jesus creating the sun and light, Shelton raised his hand. He said he didn't create the sun until day four. Yeah. So how could there be light the first three days? God is light. So God's a photon. God's what made photons possible. And what day did he do that? I would think day one. The parents were very embarrassed, so the father decided to fake a heart attack and lead Hilton out of the auditorium. Seven-year-old prodigy skips grades to high school. His classmates all love him very much. Whenever he came out of class, everyone would cheer for him. It's not because he's so cute. It was because he used statistics, helped the school's rugby team win many games. This day, the Sheldon family was watching a rugby game, as is customary in rugby. The team will forfeit in the fourth round. Everyone knew that. But Shelton said, the team on the fourth round abandoned the ball is very unreasonable. Statistically speaking, on fourth down, abandon the ball will give the opponent a 90% chance of scoring. If that doesn't abandon the ball, the team still has a half chance of scoring. In conclusion, the team should not abandon anymore. The whole family was dumbfounded. The grandmother began to question her daughter, asking who the child's real father really is. Dad and brother both objected to Shelton's view because they were both rugby players at school. That's the way they were taught to play. They didn't think Shelton was right. Sheldon had to check again. At night, no it's right. Dad began to believe Sheldon's projections might be correct. Because at the age of six, 
Sheldon was doing all the family's taxes. Not only did he avoid the tax system's audits, he also helped them get several tax refunds. The next day when his dad picked Sheldon up from school, he asked his son if statistics applied to his team, because his team was playing in the tournament today too. Unlike our former principal, math doesn't discriminate. His brother heard that his dad was going to use Sheldon's tactics, was very much against it because everyone knew the fourth down was going to balloon. But Sheldon's next comment left his brother speechless. Does everybody knowing something make it right? Because that's what makes this country great. At the school football game, Dad's team has fallen on hard times. When everyone thought Dad would abandon on fourth down, he went the other way, chose to believe that Sheldon's brother didn't have abandoned either. They scored, won the game. In the evening, Grandma found Sheldon, hoping he could help her pick lottery numbers through statistics. Sheldon said yes. Shortly after, Dad and Mom found Sheldon. Dad gave him the team ball. It was the highest honor in football, but Sheldon thought the ball was dirty. He didn't want to touch it, Mom said. Sheldon, your daddy's telling you he's proud of you. Thank you, Dad. You're welcome. I'm still never touching that. Over the next few weeks, Sheldon used statistics, helped the school's team win every game. He became the star of the school. The students loved him. In just three minutes, he was hugged by girls more than 50 times. But he didn't like the suffocating feeling, since he has to help his dad's team every day in helping his grandma choose numbers. He even took up his study time. So in a test to save time, he wrote only the answers on the test paper without writing the process of solving the problem. Even though all these answers were correct, but the teacher still gave him a B. He didn't like it, but the greater the ability, the greater the responsibility. Dad was counting on him. Grandma was counting on him. The school team was counting on him. After much deliberation, he came up with a coping strategy. He snitched to his mom. He told his mom everything. So his mom took his test papers and found them one by one and then criticized them. You're the ones who keep going to my Shelton for help. That's why his grades were going down the drain. But grandma didn't give up. She still asked Sheldon to pick his numbers. Sheldon also cooperated and gave her the number. But this time Sheldon deliberately gave her the wrong number. Since then, Grandma never asked Sheldon for help again. Sheldon finally had time to lecture to the university professors. And the next lecture Sheldon gave directly produced one of the world's richest men. The seven-year-old prodigy was teaching a professor at NASA. He was using math to demonstrate the process of rocket recovery. The professor was just a student in front of him. Even Musk became the richest man in the world after reading his notes. Just a few days ago, the school invited a professor from the space agency to educate the children about space. When he said that every time the space agency launched a rocket, it loses hundreds of millions of dollars. Shelton raised his hand when he heard that. He said that if we want to save money, why don't we recover the rocket's boosters? Instead, they should just fall into the ocean. The professor didn't want to. It's just that the technical side of it can't be done. Why not? Well, it's hard to explain. The math is pretty complicated. Perhaps I could help you with it. The professor thought the kid was cute, so he took out his NASA badge and gave it to him. He treats Sheldon like he was a kid. This directly angered Sheldon. So he made up his mind to make this idiot apologize for him. When he got home, Sheldon started working on it at night. His father urged him to go to bed early to save money on the electric bill. So Sheldon turned off the light and went to bed. But when his dad came out of his room, he looked back and saw that the light in his room was back on. The next day Sheldon asked his parents to buy a computer to help him calculate the equations for rocket recovery. But the condition of his family not well, his father turned him down. He had no choice but to find his elderly grandmother. How much money are you planning to leave me when you die? Grandmother was so angry that she closed the door. Sheldon knocked on the door again. He said he wanted to buy a computer to study. Good thing grandma loves this kid so much. Nine bucks. And, uh, oh, look at that. A peso. She gave her the money she had saved up for a long time. But it only adds up to nine bucks and five cents. That's not enough. So Sheldon called the bank. He tried to mortgage the family home. Luckily, his mother stopped him in time. Otherwise they would have had to sleep on a bridge at night. It was obvious to Sheldon that no one in the family was supportive of him. So he was so angry that he stormed out. He even used profanity. Beans and crackers! And so Sheldon's plan was put on hold. Until this day, Sheldon said he had a stomachache. They don't know if it was real or not. His parents took him to the hospital, and in the hospital, Sheldon set his eyes on a computer in his office, and so he used the unused computer to complete his academic research. That very night he packaged the results and mailed it to the professor who had previously looked down on him. Sheldon waited day after day for a reply from the professor, but it had been more than 10 days. He hadn't received any mail. 
Sheldon felt sad because no one cares about this little kid something in the mail. Dad couldn't take it anymore, so he decided to go to NASA with Sheldon. In this moment, Sheldon loved his dad so much. In order to support Sheldon, dad set off with his family, but when they got to the space agency, they waited in the lobby for over two hours. Still couldn't get a meeting with the professor. Dad got angry and rushed into the office. The professor then asked the receptionist to let Sheldon in. Sheldon walked confidently into the professor's office. He demonstrated the rocket recovery theory to the professor. And here, near Apogee, we gimbal the engine to exert a torque that executes a pitchover maneuver to flip the rocket by 180 degrees. He couldn't believe it. This is what a seven-year-old wrote outside the office. Brother and sister are bored and want to go home. Grandma tells them, hey, Someday somebody's gonna write a book about Sheldon. Don't you want there to be a chapter about how loving and supportive you two were? Doesn't matter, I ain't reading it. And at this point Sheldon has finished his presentation. Finally got an apology from the professor. For Sheldon, he just wanted an apology from the professor. And for the space industry, this will be a milestone. Sheldon left the professor's office contentedly. On the way home, Sheldon said to his dad, Dad, thank you. You're welcome. We're real proud of you, honey. Are you proud of me and Dorothy? Of course. You bet. Now they don't know how important this academic study of Sheldon's really is. Years later, Sheldon's rocket recovery theory was validated. The first rocket recovery was completed, and the founder of this company was Musk. He sitting in his office was reading the academic research that Sheldon had written back then. And then he was interrupted by a phone call. The caller said that someone named Sheldon wanted to meet with him. Can you recall your memories as a baby? Sheldon can. He can clearly remember what happened to him when he was first born. And that's not all. He was able to use his great memory to avoid his parents' divorce. That day, Grandma made a steak for the family. It's the most delicious steak in America. It was so juicy and tender that everyone loved it. Dad even flattered her. He said that it was because of this steak. That's why we married. Grandma was very happy when she heard that. So she asked Dad to get a pen and paper. She wanted to tell him the secret recipe of the steak. Dad had been waiting for this moment for a long time. But when Grandma finished writing and handed it to him, Dad realized he had been fooled. You're a horrible person. He was very angry. For more than 10 years, he had done his best to raise his wife and children for this family. But Grandma treated him like an outsider. She wouldn't even give him a recipe. His father even quarreled with his mother over this matter. Sister was eavesdropping at the door, but the mother found out and slipped away. When she left, she even knocked on her brother's room. And so, he was inexplicably scolded by his mother. What did I do? The next day, father was sullen at home. Grandma came over and pulled out the secret recipe for steak from her arms. Dad was happy and surprised. He didn't know why Grandma had suddenly changed her mind. Connie, I don't know what to say. Don't call me Connie. Call me Mom. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome, son. They were just going to let go of their differences, but Grandma to teach him another lesson. What a dope. Dad followed the recipe on the paper. It took him a day just to buy the ingredients. Then he spent 14 hours baking. Finally found out that the recipe was false again. Dad came home and this time he was completely furious. Because Dad had a fight with Mom last time, Grandmother wanted to get back at him. Dad felt that she was always on Grandma's side. So he filed for divorce. Sheldon and his brother immediately held an emergency meeting to discuss how to solve this crisis. Brother planned to go to the night to get the secret recipe of Grandma and give it to Dad. At that moment, his sister made a noise with a train toy. Choo choo! This directly stirred up memories of Sheldon's childhood. Choo choo! He remembers when he was three months old. Grandma fed him. She told him the recipe. Although this is a secret of Grandma. But after weighing the pros and cons, Sheldon decided to tell his father the secret. He gathered the family together. He claimed he was going to reveal Grandma's secret steak recipe. Grandma didn't believe Sheldon could remember anything from his childhood. Then Sheldon said, One tablespoon of cumin, one cup of brown oh, sugar. Okay, okay, stop. I'll give it to your father. But Dad says it doesn't matter anymore. He doesn't really care about the recipe for the steak. What he wants is the way Grandma treats him. Although he was a son-in-law, but he didn't want to be treated like an outsider. And she confessed everything. Never thought you were good enough for my daughter. There you were, riding around on that dumb motorcycle, knocking her up. Dad also understood her very well. After all, no one wants to marry their daughter to a poor man. He said he would not treat her daughter badly. He told her not to worry. In fact, there is no conflict between the family. It's okay to talk about it. And so they made up. Once Grandma left, Dad forced Sheldon to tell him the recipe. He had been waiting for this recipe for 15 years. He cut off a piece and started to taste it. Then he couldn't help but say the classic line. Ah, damn. Want some? Uh, no thank you, I'm not hungry. 
The genius boy skipped a grade and went to high school. He was a big kid with the girls. He used math to prove the feasibility of rocket recovery. Musk read his notes and became the richest man in the world. Sheldon had a high IQ, but his emotional intelligence was very low. Her mother thought she was a loner, so she asked his father to spend more time with him. But it didn't like spending time with him. He felt that all Sheldon could talk about was science. Was bored and mother said, you have to make an effort. Young boys who don't spend time with their daddies grow up to be oddballs. At the insistence of mother, so dad decided to spend some quality time with Sheldon. The next day, dad asked Sheldon to go out for the weekend, but Sheldon said he already had plans for the weekend. He was going to watch the space shuttle launch in order to spend more time with his son. Dad said he wanted to go with him, but in fact, Sheldon didn't really want to see the rocket launch. He wanted to be on the space shuttle to get off this stupid planet. On the day of departure, Dad went to get Sheldon up early in the morning. He didn't realize he was already gone. He and Mom searched the whole house and finally found Sheldon packed and dressed. He was waiting by the car. On the way, Sheldon talked about SCHR, but they didn't seem to be talking the same. Dad cared if the cat was dead or not. His brother thought the cat's name was SCHR. When they arrived at the hotel, it started to rain. Dad apologized to Sheldon. He said he couldn't go with him to see the shuttle launch. He was afraid that Sheldon would be sad, so we got to talking about Sheldon's favorite topic. Dad asked Sheldon how lightning works. When positive and negative charges grow large enough, a giant spark occurs in the cloud. Years later, Sheldon realized the reason his dad was asking these questions just to make him happy and his brother didn't have to decorate but really stupid. On the way home, Sheldon looked at her dad even though he didn't get to on that space shuttle out of the earth. But it was one of his happiest trips. But he didn't tell his dad this is also his lifelong regret. Sheldon recalled when he was growing up. I wish I had told my father while he was alive. When he got home, Dad asked Sheldon to help his brother with his homework because there was a test coming up. If he failed, he would have to repeat the grade in order to get Sheldon to promise. Dad promised to buy Sheldon a $20 toy. Sheldon agreed to do so, but his brother was too stupid. Sheldon told him to close his eyes. Think back to the formula for the Pythagorean theorem. Instead, he thought of a lady in a bikini. This made Sheldon mad. $20 isn't gonna do it. It's exam day. The teacher had just finished handing out the papers. Shelton raised his hand and said he had finished. Then he turned around and looked at his brother who was so worried. Sheldon blamed himself as his remedial teacher but failed to teach him well. But the next day, when the results were announced, he found out that his brother had passed. He thought that his brother must have cheated, so he sneaked into his brother's room at night. And sure enough, he found the answers written on the bottom of his brother's shoes. He wanted to tell his parents all about it and that's when his brother found him. He told Sheldon not to make a fuss. He passed the test anyway. He don't have to repeat a grade and you'll get a toy. What's not to like? But if you tell mom and dad, they'll be upset. Why bother? This March Sheldon was dumbfounded by his brother. He gets angry and says, This isn't over. Oh yeah? What are you gonna do? Alright, maybe it's over. Sheldon got his present. But he wasn't very happy. Grandma could see right away that he had something on his mind. So, Shelton told Grandma about his brother's cheating. But Grandma said, I mean, there's always going to be people in this world who are playing fast and loose with the rules. And your brother's one of them? Grandma actually wanted to tell her, break the rules. Taking the easy way out is necessarily a bad thing. Shelton seems to get it on the other side of the room. Her brother is lying in bed, reading a book. Then Shelton knocked on the door and came in. He wanted his brother to teach him how to break the rules and take shortcut. Okay, like when I wanted to spend the night at Ricky's house and mom asked me if his mom and dad were going to be home, I said not only are they going to be home, his dad was going to teach us how to cook turkey legs in the smoke. The clever Sheldon picked up the essence right away, so he made up a story full of details, took a week off from his teacher, and walked out of school with a flourish. When he got home, he wanted his sister to give up the TV, so he grabbed a shovel. He lied to his sister that he had dug up treasures in the yard. Can I use your shovel? Be my guest. Oh baby, I'm gonna be rich! His sister took her shovel, started her treasure hunt. Sheldon succeeded in tricking her remote control. Sheldon took grandma's words applying it in a bad way. In the end, grandma got what she deserved for her words. She became the first victim of sister's treasure digging project. <laughs> and Sheldon is not idle either. He's back in the school. Seven-year-old prodigy skips grace to high school. His cute look was liked by his classmates, but the teachers did not like him because he would often pick on the teachers. And so the square of sine plus cosine equals one. Sheldon. I don't want to embarrass you, so I'm going to give you a moment to think about what you just said. 
The math teacher was so angry that as if her nostrils were smoking, the principal invited his parents to school, said the teacher's knowledge was not as good as his. The school can accommodate him, suggested that he be sent to a school for gifted children. There is not only a full scholarship and free of charge for eats and lives, the only drawback is that it's a bit far away. But mom thinks her son is too young, she didn't want him to go too far away from home. And the father thought, Sheldon can't be the age of Earth. You're saying he's an alien? When they returned home, Grandma agreed that Sheldon should go to that school. They wanted to hear Sheldon's opinion. They didn't expect the Sheldon to agree straight away. When he left, Grandma gave him a necklace. She said it was a family heirloom. She was very sad to see him go. Mom cried as she packed Sheldon's bags. The next day, they arrived at this school for the gifted. The campus was unusually quiet. Sheldon really liked the atmosphere. It made him wonder. The school before was like a zoo. When the parents came home, Mom missed her son so much. So she started complaining about her husband. It was because of him that she couldn't see Sheldon. At night, when his sister was in bed, she missed so much the fighting with Sheldon before they went to bed. And now there was only a cold bed. Alright, I can't hear you so I'm gonna hang out now. And mom is arguing with grandma. She thinks grandma doesn't care about Sheldon. She so care about his little grandson. It's just that she thinks that's where he belongs. And that's when dad walks in at this point. Where are you off to? North Dallas to get Sheldon. Sheldon is lying in bed. He's worried that the fan overhead will fall. And he couldn't fall asleep. But eventually he fell asleep. When he woke up, he was in his dad's car. Dad. Yeah? I'm glad you came to get me. Me too. The next morning, his sister opened her eyes to see Sheldon lying in bed. Hey, yeah. No hugging, no hugging! Yeah. And so they took Sheldon back to his old school. That day, Sheldon wanted his mom to buy him a computer. Mom wanted to buy it for Sheldon, but Dad refused. He thought the family was spending too much money. So Mom and Dad started arguing again. Mom said she saved her money and if you don't buy it, I'll buy it for him. No, here and there. Where are you hiding it? Well, now you're headed in the secret territory. Just so I'm clear, my money's our money, but your money's your money. Dad was very angry, so the next day Dad bought the cases of beer and came home. Mom saw it and asked him where he got the money to buy it. I didn't use your money, use mine. Mom is not easy to mess with. She told the kids that she was moving to Grandma's house. Who wants to follow her? Brother wants to see Mom leave quickly, so he chose to stay, but without Mom at home. Life was a mess. Even the dinner can only eat cereal. So my brother came to school, and he yelled at Sheldon, It's all because you want to buy some fucking computer. That's why Mom and Dad split up. After school, Dad asked Brother to do the laundry, but he couldn't even use the washing machine. Dad wonders why one son is a genius and the other is a fool, but it didn't feel bad when he heard that. He felt that the foolish man is blessed with foolishness. Dad had no choice but to do it himself. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Dad also does not know how to use the washing machine, so he told Dad to apologize to Mom. Bring Mom back. Dad said he wouldn't go even if killed him. On the other hand, Mom bought a computer for Sheldon. Sheldon wanted to find a solution to his parents' fight on the computer. Grandma saw it and found Mom. She tells Mom to go back and pretend to get some clothes. Give Dad a chance. He will apologize to you. Mom thought it was a good idea. So she went out. She bumped into Dad who was walking out. Dad plucked up his courage. I, uh, want to apologize. Let me go for a walk. Talk a little. Sure. Dad took the initiative to hold Mom's hand. Grandma and the kids peeking in the window. They can finally go home. They were very happy to have the computer. Taking turns playing with the computer. But Grandma doesn't know what a computer is. The next day Mom was washing clothes in the washing machine. Dad watching in the side. But you put Sheldon, who had always been arrogant, returned home at this time and he was bullied. The kid wrapped himself in an air mattress in order to avoid the bullies. The distance of 100 meters on the way from school every day. It's a dangerous distance for him. When he got home, he's even cautious about walking. Mom immediately noticed something was going on. He asked Sheldon what the hell was going on. Sheldon had to admit that he was being bullied, but he didn't dare give her name. Otherwise, he would die a horrible death. Mom was very angry, and Dad told Mom not to panic because bullying is really hard to deal with. If you don't get it right, it will turn into a trouble. Mom said she didn't understand, but Mom couldn't care less. To find out who was bullying Sheldon, he called his brother from the same class. Your brother was bullied, and you're still sleeping here. But his brother said he was at school. Everyone ignored Sheldon. The girls think he's cute. They can't wait to hug him. How could anyone bully him? But his mother still asked him to protect Sheldon. He had no choice but to go to school with Sheldon. Just then, Sheldon was suddenly scared and hit. Sheldon saw the bully. Brother asked if it was the little fat boy next door. But Sheldon said no. His dad? No. No.
She's a demon. Brother tells his family what happened. She slaps him around, takes his lunch money. She even put a tadpole down his shirt. To confirm the situation, they went to the neighbor's door. Looking at this harmless little girl, the mother could not imagine that she would bully anyone. So the mother asked the father to find the parents of the little girl. Why me? Because you're more intimidating than me. The father had no choice but to find the girl's father. And then, with difficulty, he said, Your daughter is bullying my son. Cooper says that you've been picking on Sheldon. Now, is that true? No, Daddy. Are you sure? Okay. Dad has no choice but to go back. When he went back, neighbor even laughed at him for being sent by his wife to be funny. When he got home, Dad said with a smile on his face that he had solved everything. Now Sheldon could finally put down his mess. Play with his little train. Just then Balala came to the door. You told on me. Well, actually my brother figured it out, so... And I'm prepared to throw it at you! Mom treated Sheldon's wound afterwards. Sheldon claims he was using Chinese Kung Fu against Balala, but he tripped and fell, and although his mother was very care about him, but she still had to say to Sheldon, You should know that a man's not supposed to raise his hand to a woman. Oh, I won't. I don't want to hurt myself again. When he was done, Sheldon asked his mother, Did you ever have a bully when you were growing up? Have you met your grandma? In order to solve the problem, Sheldon found his sister. He wanted her to avenge his death. He hired his sister as his fighter for two dollars. But when his sister went to her house, they were having a great time. She even became good friends with Balala. When his sister returned home tired of playing, she lied to Sheldon and told him that she had beaten up Balala. She wouldn't dare to come to you again. Sheldon was relieved. And his mother also found Balala's mother. She wanted her to discipline her daughter, to take care of her daughter. But Balala's mother didn't believe that. A six-year-old girl would bully someone. So they argued. When they returned home, Balala's father found Sheldon's father. He was also sent by his wife to inquire about the situation. And so the men, who were afraid of their wives, came to a secret base. They drank beer, feeling happiness. Balala's father also began to apologize. Sheldon's dad said, It's just a little kid's little fight. And said that when they grow up, they will miss this childhood friendship. They laughed and became good friends. And Sheldon, up until this point, thought his sister had taken care of Balala for him. He finally didn't have to go home in hiding. And that's when. And so Sheldon's entire childhood lived in the darkness of Balala. Sometime later, Sheldon graduated. He was admitted to college. Gifted teenager gets into college at age 9. This is big news. Soon the local TV station came to the house. They wanted to interview the family. Sheldon was very calm. But his siblings were even more excited than he was. Sheldon's twin sister was happy to say she was about to graduate. The reporter thought they were two geniuses in one family. But then she told them that she had graduated from elementary school and sang a children's song. The elder brother was more mature and stable. He asked the reporter in a low voice, Can I ask for your contact information? In the end, the TV station decided to interview only Sheldon and his parents. But Sheldon was very upset. The reporter asked Sheldon what he missed about high school. Sheldon said no. After all, he hadn't been in high school for more than a few days. He felt a lot of pressure. His parents were counting on him. The school was counting on him. Society was counting on him. These are not things that he should be to endure. The more he talks, the more excited he gets. Because even though I'm smart, I'm just a little boy. In the end, the reporter had to end the interview early. But his parents didn't understand him. Sheldon had to deal with all the interviews and preparing for his graduation speech. Even when he lost his glasses, mom and dad wouldn't help him find them. Dad even said, Is this how you plan on acting when you get to college? No. Good. You're gonna need to handle stuff like this on your own. At night, Sheldon lay in bed and couldn't sleep. And his sister told him, I know why you're worried. Because you're afraid that everything is different from what you thought it would be. And you miss what you had? It makes you feel bad. Because that's what his sister was feeling now. She was about to graduate from elementary school, too. Sheldon asked her, You're scared? Yeah. So what do we do? I guess be scared and do it anyway. It's comforting to know that you feel the same way that I do. Then Sheldon went to mom and dad's room to tell them he was ready for college. The school graduation ceremony was on schedule. He said it wasn't a good speaker, but today he had to say a few words. He would like to thank one person because if it wasn't for this person, he would not be standing here today. He taught himself a lot of things. He has become a role model for himself. Mom, Dad and Grandma on stage were very pleased. They thought Sheldon was talking about himself. But instead, Sheldon said his sister's name. This is for you. Change can be scary, but I know we're going to be fine. Because like you said, it's okay to be scared. 
We just have to do it anyway. The next day, Shelton attended his sister's elementary school graduation. Although they didn't need a graduation speech, but he could feel all the words his sister wanted to say to him. Soon Shelton was on his life to college. On his first day of school, he was fascinated by the university library. He got so caught up in the books, forgot to report to the freshman's office. He rushed to the freshman office. Unexpectedly, he bumped into a classmate's drink. He made a mess of getting to the freshman office. The teacher was dumbfounded when she saw Shelton. This was the first time she had ever received such a young college student. It was a bad day, but for Shelton, if he couldn't even do it himself, it would be a disgrace to his idol Newton. But one thing led to another. He had just finished urinating. The zipper couldn't be pulled up, so he opened his toolbox. Oh dear. He had to tape it on. And so when he stepped into the classroom, everyone looked at him with amazement. I may not look it, but I'm future physics, so just... In the blink of an eye, they all grew up. This day, when his sister found out for the first time after using the toilet that she had period, she was very frightened. Dad asked her what was wrong. How embarrassing it is for a girl to have her first period. Dad asked her what's wrong. That thing that happens to girls when they're becoming young ladies. The silly father didn't react until now. Dad is acting more nervous than his daughter. We're gonna go to a drugstore and get what I need. Okay, I can do that. Breathe. We're gonna get through this. He took her daughter to the drugstore. Nothing to be embarrassed about. It's perfectly natural. How much money you need? I'm not going in there. You are. Why can't you go? It's embarrassing. You just said it wasn't embarrassing. Well, it is, and I lied. Eventually, Dad went in with a cheeky face, but he didn't know what kind of medicine to buy, so he bought all the pills for women. You don't know what you're doing, do you? No, oh, ma'am. Would you like some help? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. With the help of Teller, Dad only managed to buy the right thing. He wanted to take his daughter to the toilet. Daughter said she had to give Teller a hug first. Daughter's emotional intelligence is indeed very high, but her brother Sheldon's emotional intelligence is very low. Sheldon used his free time in college, part-time job outside of school. He used his knowledge of trains, successfully applied for a job as a train museum docent. He took it very seriously. Sometimes a customer just comes to the museum to use the bathroom. He would say, You'll want to chug along past our authentic 1928 Southern Pacific Sunset Limited whistle. Just as he was getting into the swing of things, the guest interrupted him. He said he couldn't hold it in any longer. It's in the back. Thank you. And our toilets flush, unlike the ones on trains before 1889. Not only that, he also repeatedly pointed out the curator's mistakes in front of the audience. This made the curator very embarrassed. That day, the curator approached Sheldon. He said that he was fired. Sheldon didn't understand why. He was so conscientious. It's great to have knowledge. Sheldon, it's great to have knowledge, but you don't need to show it off all the time. Oh, I don't mind. You see, trains are all about balance, right? That good engineer makes sure he uses just the right amount of water. Not too little, not too much. The curator actually wants to tell him, not every audience is so eager to learn. For example, some people just want to come to the toilet. There is no need to explain anymore. We can't explain things just right. Another thing is no need to keep pointing out the mistakes of others in public. But Sheldon doesn't know anything about these. He said that when he was in school, if the teacher was wrong, he would point it out mistakes directly. And so Sheldon was fired, but he didn't understand why he was fired. He told his grandma about this. Grandma told him to understand what the curator said. People don't want to learn new things all the time. This made Sheldon even more confused. Isn't learning should hunger and thirst? He wanted to learn new things all the time. To prove Sheldon wrong, Grandma brought out the fleas. And then she shows Sheldon how to knit a sweater. Grandma thinks that this kind of stuff, a normal young man wouldn't like it. But Sheldon was so hungry for it, she was falling asleep talking to herself. But Sheldon listened with great interest until the home. Sheldon was still asking her about knitting sweaters. Hold that thought. And his brother was even better. He told his dad he had bought an RV. 